Okay, uh, I want to do a video on this uh, false prophet right here and a little bit of a warning to you guys out there. Um, this is a little bit different than what I normally do. Um, this guy right here uh, is claiming that he is the prophet Elijah. And I'm going to show you why he's a fool. Okay, that he's lost. He's just a false prophet trying to deceive people. Um, it's funny, he's a Gentile too, by the way. Uh, Elijah was a Jew. Okay, he was from the nation of Israel. First, you can read, uh, you know, First Kings chapter eighteen, verse thirty-one. You know, he was Elijah was sitting there and uh, getting twelve stones to represent the twelve tribes. Okay, so this guy right here is claiming that he's that he's coming back as Elijah. And I'm gonna show you from Scripture why he's wrong. Okay, so let's get to Facebook. And, um, of course, here's his page right here. Other than the obvious. What's that? that? He's white. Yeah. I mean. Not Jewish. Not Jewish, you know. Uh, let's see where's that post at. I'm doing it a little different today. I'm not doing actual videos. I'm doing a couple of huge Christian. I'm rebuking a, a couple of huge Christian uh, so-called uh, pages. One's got over 300,000 plus subscribers to it so i'm gonna i'm gonna take care of that too in a little bit let's see here let's see i think this is it right here so you just bear with me um, may have deleted it, i don't know Just like he may have. What do you mean by? He had a um Oh maybe I'm getting down to it. Okay. Okay, here's a good one to start. He says, I'm going to give all my enemies a bonus today on the subject of gay relations. I am not gay or a homosexual, but I would soon stand by a homosexual as a brother in Christ than a self righteous religious crusader who speaks nothing but hatred and false judgment. Huh? Okay, I would soon condemn the one who calls them a faggot to the pits of hell over anyone who actually practices homosexuality. Okay, so you're going to stand beside sodomites over other Christians, uh huh? Yeah, probably because you're probably probably because you're, you're a closet homosexual yourself. I was guilty of the whole lot of premarital sex with many different women living in strip clubs. That is sin, just the same as being gay. Okay. Now I've said that being gay is a sin, didn't I? But who's, who knows the depth of his grace and is not sin even after being saved? Okay, let me just say this real quick. If you are a sodomite, okay, and you get saved, I don't believe you can stay a sodomite, okay? The Holy Spirit's going to come in and direct your life and get you away and give you the desires to have the attraction for the opposite sex. I don't believe there are such things as a gay Christian. Sorry, that's just a contradiction. Um, that's yeah, a, because the Bible says that you're a new, new creature in Christ. Okay. Old things are passed away. All things become new. That's right. Let's see here. Uh, I'm trying to find that one. Yeah, here we go. Here's this nonsense right here. This is what I'm talking about. I did talk to Moses for four hours one day, 17 years ago, and though he was sad, because was because was now he can, his post don't even make any sense. Sounds like he needs to go back to English school. Because was now old and knew he would not see the kingdom come in his lifetime. Huh? You mean that Moses, 17 years ago, has not seen the kingdom come? I mean, are you kidding me? <laughs> he was also very happy for me and knew that our time together was precious. Oh, isn't that sweet? Well, he talked face to face and revealed to me some very awesome things, of course, that I needed confirmed. It was about salvation and how hard it is to lose our salvation. Uh-oh. We talked about the oath of the kingdom. Um, chapter and verse, please. I mean, can you please show me that from Scripture? The oath of the kingdom. There's two kingdoms mentioned in the Bible. There's the kingdom of God, which is the spiritual, Romans 14, 17. And then you have the kingdom of heaven, which is the physical, earthly kingdom where Jesus Christ is going to rule and reign. Not mm -hmm. where one time is ever mentioned oath of the kingdom. Give me a break. It sounds like a Freemason word. Or yeah, that's you know, like a little buzzword or something. Word. Yeah. And the book of Hebrews, and then never again, never saw him again. The amazing thing was that he confirmed that Peter had told me about salvation also. 
This is why, I, you know, it's funny. He says Peter and Moses, but not once does he ever mention Paul, the apostle of the Gentiles. You know, this is why, because the moment you give your life to Christ, seven higher ranking demons come to put you in bondage so that you will not reach your calling and come close to your full potential in Christ. Uh, chapter and verse. Yeah, exactly. Uh, because if you're walking in the spirit and are blind, because if you're walking in the spirit and are blind, blind to it, then Satan can easily trip you. How can you be walking in the spirit and be blind to it at the same time? Mm. That's a contradiction. You can't have yeah, both. You're walking in the yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. Walking in the spirit and are blind to it. Uh, that's a contradiction. You can't have both. Satan can easily trip you up over and over until you just go back to life as you were. However, you can never go back to the life as it were because now you belong to God no matter how tripped up you get. That is true. Your soul belongs to Jesus because in that moment you confessed your sin and gave yourself to him. Renouncing your face is the only way to lose your salvation. Oh, see, here we go. I knew there was some kind of, uh, you know, some kind of poison in his message. Okay. So what's the Bible say about that? Well, I'll show you. Second Timothy chapter two, verse eleven. Okay, it is a faithful saying: For if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. He'll deny our salvation. No, keep reading. If we believe not yet, he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. So if you believe not. He cannot deny himself. No, but I don't believe a, Christ, a true born again Christian is going to do that, though. I don't think they're going to just totally renounce their faith like that. Anyway, um, and if you read over here in Romans chapter 8, verse 35, says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, or sword? I'm just going to skip on down here, right here. It says, it says, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, or any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hmm. Doesn't sound like renouncing your faith is going to make you lose your salvation either. What a bunch of nonsense. Alright. Let's see here. This is why... I speak against those who are living in the wilderness and call themselves Jews, but are the synagogue of Satan. Uh-oh. They make you renounce the name of Jesus Christ and Christianity to live there and create the offspring of the kingdom for the millennial reign. What? They make you renounce the name of Jesus, Jesus and Christianity to live there and create the offspring of the kingdom. Um, I thought in the resurrection we're neither married nor given in the marriage, but, we're already, we, but we are the angel as the angels of heaven. And all angels are men, by the way. I should mention that. Okay, so how's that work? <laughs> we're not we're not Mormons. Okay, we don't produce spirit babies. That's another false teaching he has. So look, don't believe me. You have everything you need to know in the Torah and in the New Testament. If I'm going to be like Christ, though, I'm also going to fulfill Scripture and prophecy and the law that Moshe, okay, gave us at Mount Horeb. Hey, hey! third place is pretty good when you run the pace to the kingdom, run the race to the kingdom. The first will be the last, and last will be the first. The kingdom of heaven is likened unto treasure hidden in the field. Now a man found that treasure and hid it. Then he went back in his joy and sold all that he had to buy that field. This merely a parable, yet is about me, because I found the secret treasure and it has been hidden in my heart. Huh? And I have laid down my life and sold myself out because Jesus shows us that laying our lives down for him is how we truly find ourselves. What? Well, I saw that saw the kingdom, my friends, and I bought the field. I'm sold out for Jesus, for you, Jesus. May you bless all those who hear me and want to buy this field. Filling the kingdom that you have given to me and all those... You know what, this is just a bunch of nonsense. Just... He says right here on one of his posts that he, I am already dead and resurrected, not because I saw death in John, but because of the doctrine of the Holy Spirit, eternal power, have both crucified my own. Oh, 
Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's see what he's else. He's saying that he's the actual prophet Elijah. Yeah, he is. He's saying the, he's the actual and prophet Elijah. that can't be Elijah. true because, um, first of all, Elijah was, um, what would you call it, translated? Translated. He was taken up in uh, Second Kings chapter 2. He's going to be in the time of Jacob's trouble. He's going to be one of the two witnesses. Yeah. And this guy has problems. Here we go, right here. Brethren, if I have said to you that I am Elijah or the third coming of Elijah, it is not is enough for you to understand that the Father is with me since I have also told you that I am the vessel of the person of the Father as a divine representative for his feet and toes, ears and he, eyes and ears, his hand and his vocal cords. Are you kidding me? All right, let's see about Mr. Elijah. Malachi chapter 4. He says he's the true Elijah. I mean, this guy's just an idiot. I just want to warn. This is basically a warning warning to you guys out there that try to say that get duped into following some nut like this. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Malachi chapter four verse five. Hmm. Before the coming and the great and dreadful day of the Lord. What is that exactly? How about the second coming of Jesus Christ? When he gets ready to set up his kingdom, the day of the Lord, a day to the Lord is a thousand years. Okay, so what's the thousand year reign? That is the day of Christ. Okay, he's going to come right before that. I don't understand why people don't get that. You should look at the pest in the sky, too. Yeah. James chapter 5. He's not going to be reborn into another woman. Yeah, I know. I mean... It's just like, that's, what is that, reincarnation now? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, false religion. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are. Elias being the Greek word for Elijah, basically, in the New Testament. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. Again, if you rightly divide the word of truth like you're supposed to, James is written to the twelve tribes. James chapter one. Okay it to the 12 tribes when did the 12 tribes come back in the time of jacob's trouble the tribulation time period okay that's what it, people are familiar with the tribulation okay tribulation is not the the tribulation or the great tribulation is not a title of that time period it's the time of jacob's trouble plain and simple okay it's a time of israel's trouble and he's sitting there blaspheming the true israelites when yet he's a gentile and why would Elijah come back for the Gentile nations. Why would he come back in uh, Alabama, where this man's from, and set up his little, you know, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, his quote unquote ministry? Okay. No, he's going to come back for the Jewish people. All right. It's just the way it is. And uh, let's see here. I'll tell you what, let's go to Revelation chapter 11 real quick. This guy's just. Okay. I'm trying to remember where it is. Oh, well. That's not what I was wanting, anyway. Okay. Let me go back up the top. This is a little difficult than I normally do. I normally just, uh... Okay, I'm going to show you something very interesting here. This guy calls himself a Christian, right? Oh, let me show you something. Okay. Here's his likes, okay? Led Zeppelin. Hmm. That's spiritual. Look at all the satanic symbols right there. You got the tray arch, the three circles interlocking together. Hmm. I did that. It didn't work. I hit more. See, it don't do anything. I had to do it a different way. Look. See, I told you. Go to the likes then, maybe. I, said, I, am, on the, I am on the likes. Oh. See? Okay, right click here, and then likes. And music. 
Maybe if I just do this. Yeah. Sorry, I kind of had to do that real quick. I don't know why it's doing that. Uncle. See, it's not doing anything, hun. I don't know what the deal is. No. Go right there. Like, oh, that like that one. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Now go down and music. Okay. All right. There you go. Led Zeppelin, Foo Fighters, Soundgarden. Hmm. Corn. Oh, wonderful. Look at this. Is this something a Christian should have right here? I'm just going to get this thing to flip. That's nah, not going to flip. Hmm, look at that nice little Illuminati pyramid right there. Hmm. This guy's a prophet of God? I don't think so. Corn, Smashing Pumpkins, Alice in Chains. You know what Alice in Chains sings in one of their songs? In the song Man in the Box? They say, Deny Jesus Christ, Deny Your Maker. Yep, and this guy calls himself a Christian. Red Hot Chili Peppers, Satanic Band. Nirvana. Mm hmm. Should study the things in Nirvana sometime. Well, don't. But Nirvana is tied into uh, what is it? Hinduism. Um. Well, yeah, not yeah. Nirvana means that they reach some state of. It's like it's something having to do with in reincarnation or yeah. something like that. It's something really satanic like Being that. Like a, your own god. Yeah. Nirvana is what Buddhists believe in. But yeah. What? And then go to the what actual? Wait, go to the likes page and you can see he's has Catholic stuff on there. I think. The actual likes thing right here. Yeah. Yep. I don't know where they were, but lots of Jewish stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not what I wanted. No, oh, maybe I'll read it. Oh, maybe it's his groups. That's why right. the groups. Sorry. Wait, no. Oh, yeah, the groups. No, here. Down to the groups part. See? All his groups. Okay. Catholic, church, worldwide. Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints. Ooh. Ooh. Jehovah Witness and Biblical Discussion. Why are you in all these things? Catholic faith. Catholic evangelistic team. Why are you in all these Catholic things? His groups all in. There you go. Oh. Let's see. Catholic, Catholic Church. Who? Oh yeah, because you know God wants to send His prophet to yoke up with the uh, Mystery Babylon. That's real spiritual. Marriage is not a contract. Oh. Yeah, because, you know, adultery is just amazing. Um, Catholic evangel evangelizing team. Are you serious? And Jehovah's then, Witness, Catholic, Catholic Faith, Latter-day Saints. Is, yeah. I mean, why are you in all these things? Oh, the ecumenical movement, maybe? Mm. Hmm. <laughs> oh, because Elijah the prophet is coming back to... Uh, bring the ecumenical movement. Yeah, the false and Elijah. the Antichrist. This yeah. guy's sure worshipping the Antichrist. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is just basically a warning. I mean, don't fall for people that come along and say they're somebody from the Bible. They're not. They're just a liar trying to get money. I mean, I could do a lot more bigger study on this whole thing, but I don't want to waste my time with this. I just want to show you the error. Okay, I showed you that Elijah cannot come back until, you know, right before the second coming, when the two witnesses are released on the earth, okay? He's one of them, Moses and Elijah. And uh, I want to show you some scripture for that. Yeah, I got all that stuff. He was This guy was arrested, apparently, for drugs, and, uh, you know, he's talking about homosexuals, and I think it's Matthew 19, 18. 918. I'm trying to remember where it was. 18, I think it was. You should tell him his real name. Okay. Yeah, Glenn Handy is his real name.
Okay, here we go. And it came to pass about eight days after these sayings, he took Peter and John and James and went up into a mountain to pray. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered, and his raiment was white and glistering. And behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spake of, de of his de decease, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. But Peter and they that were with him were heavy with sleep, and when they were awake, they saw his glory and the two men that stood with him. And it came to pass, as they departed from him, Peter said unto Jesus, Master, is it good for us to be here? And let us make three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses, and one for Elias, not knowing what he said. While he thus spake, there came a cloud and overshadowed them, and they feared as they entered into the cloud. And there came a voice out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved Son, hear him. And when, when the voice was passed, Jesus was found alone, and they kept it close, and told no man in those days of any of those things which they have seen. So, I'm not going to read the rest of it, but right there, Moses and Elias, Elijah. Elias, again, is a, is a New Testament name for Elijah. Just like Noe is a New Testament name for Noah. So, Moses and Elijah are going to be the two witnesses. I mean, it's clear as day in the scriptures to me. I mean, if you ask a Jew, an Israelite, who they most highly regard, you know, it's Moses and Elijah. Elijah the prophets, Moses the law. Okay? Because Judea Judaism, you know, they follow Moses and the Torah. Okay? Alright. Moving on from this wicked devil, devil now. I have a... Um, couple more things I want to kick while I'm at it. Okay. Saved. Alright. If you're on Facebook, okay, um, beware of these Christian pages I'm about to show you. Um, few original posts. Okay. All right, Donald Trump will only be for real when he exposes the terrorist state of Israel. See, why is this hatred amongst the so-called Christians out there against Israel? Hmm? What has Israel done that's been a terrorist act? I mean, please, please show me. All they've ever done is fight for their land against the stinking Palestinians who have no right to that land. It belongs to Israel. And I get so sick and tired of hearing about the Palestines and them fighting with Israel. And uh, Palestinians have no right to that land. Okay? Palestinians, whatever you call them. And they're sitting there calling these guys the synagogue of Satan. Really? So who are the real Jews then? Oh, it's the Europe, white Europeans now in America. No, it isn't. All right? I can disprove that in a heartbeat. What's a nonsense? Um, this one right here. This page right here. Hell is real. This one here has a huge following. Probably 300,000 plus. And um, and right here, I'm going to read this right here. It says, one of the biggest deceptions in our time is that every Christian is going to heaven. No, no, no. This is from the pits of hell. Uh, okay. A well-packaged lie from the devil. Okay, first of all, the devil is not in hell. All right. So it's from the pits, but it's a well-packaged lie from the devil as well. Uh, that don't make any sense. It is time for Christians read the Bible and understand for themselves and stop being deceived by these once saved forever saved pastors. Yeah, okay, because eternal security is not in the Bible at all. Where does the Bible say we are saved forever? <laughs> I mean, that's just like a novice question to ask. Where does the Bible say we're saved forever? Well, I can prove that to you right now. Do to do to do, you know. I mean, these people even read the Bible? I mean, good night. I'm just going to keep it simple right here. How about this? John chapter 6 verse 47 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me had everlasting life. Oh, where in the Bible does it say we have everlasting life? You just read one right there. And uh, how about this one? 1 John chapter 5 verse 13. These things have I, have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. That ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. You know what? I got a question for these these liars out there that, that deny 
eternal security for the believer today. today. Okay. Where does it say we have a temporal life? Where does it say we got to do good things to stay saved? It doesn't. Okay. It's you're saved by grace through faith, not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works. It's not of you. Okay. It's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ paid it all. All right. And here's the thing about these people that continue to deny eternal security. They make everything about them and take the glory away from Jesus Christ. Okay? They're self-righteous is what they are. So, and I'm going to show you something here. here. It's funny. He says, this is a big lie because there are over 200 versions that show otherwise. And you scroll down here, there's not one that says such. Where are the 200 verses then? Where's your proof? Okay, if you're going back in the Old Testament, then you're a liar. Okay, because the Old Testament, we're not in, uh, we're not under that Old Testament law today. Okay? And they'll say, well, I can prove it from the book of Hebrews. Okay, fine. But the problem with using the book of Hebrews is that Hebrews is not for today either. So you've got to rightly divide this stuff. See, right now, there's, ne there's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither bond nor free. We are all one in Christ Jesus, salvation-wise. Right now, there's one body. All right, but in the time of Jacob's trouble, that's going to split from the Gentiles and the Jews. There's going to be a distinction again. Okay, that's why the seven year period is called the time of Jacob's trouble or Daniel's 70th week. That's why there's two books in the New Testament, Hebrews and James, that are primarily, primarily written to the Jewish people. Okay, that's why, that's why the book is called Hebrews. That's why James, in the fir very first verse, it says, James to the twelve tribes that are scattered abroad, greeting. Both those books are not written to Christians. We're not part of the twelve tribes. And if you're going and trying to get doctrine from both those books, you're a heretic. Okay? Instruction and righteousness, yes. For our learning, yes. We should read those books and see if there's anything that applies to us today. But if you're trying to take eternal security passages out of those books that try to overthrow it, then you're crossing dispensational lines at that point because Paul said we're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise unto the day of redemption. Okay? And in the time of Jacob's trouble, they don't have eternal security except for the 144,000. Okay? It's just the way it is. They still have the same method of salvation as we do. They just have the added thing where they can't take the mark of the beast. Okay? And uh, people make the argument, well, I don't think a truly saved person during that time period would take the mark. Really? There's Christians right now, I guarantee it, saved Christians that are compromising. Yeah, they would take the mark. Don't give me that crap, they wouldn't. But, but my point is, every one of them has to go to the book of Hebrews or the Old Testament to try, re, try to denounce eternal security. Every one of them. I have not seen one without failure, without failure, go to those books. Every one of them. Okay, they can't prove it from the books of Paul because Paul teaches eternal security. Most of those false prophets just ignore um, the books of Paul. Okay, Paul is the apostle of the Gentiles. He's the one that brought the gospel to us. Uh, let me go back to Facebook. I don't know what I'm doing here. Okay. And um, I was going to show this, this one here, but I'm not. It's basically the same thing I just showed. Um kick this guy too while I'm at it this uh, perverted sex pusher here um, I don't know why it flipped like that you doing Mark again? Mm, yeah mm. well the first video I did uh, it wasn't very good so I had I pretty much deleted it so and you know, if you want, look at this guy's stuff, it's all about masturbation and sex and these demons and stuff like that. And um, I mean, this guy is a wicked false prophet, haunted by sex from an ex. I mean, he's all about sex. I mean, just <laughs> yeah, okay, that's a Christian, very Christian right there. And uh, I want to show you this too. This is very wicked. It says. Save sexy singles. Uh huh. Seduced by the serpent. Yeah, because you probably are seduced by the serpent. Jesus the millionaire. Yeah, because Jesus was, you know, so rich. Yeah. Uh huh. 
<laughs> and this guy here, this this poor guy here says that people that are poor will not enjoy heaven. You got you have got to be kidding me. I guarantee these people out there, these there's Christians out there that would that are uh, struggling money wise, and um, you know they are they would love to go home and walk on streets of gold. So don't give me the stuff they wouldn't enjoy having. Some of us don't have a choice. And I'll, I'll say something else too. A Christian's not going to have a lot of money. If you have a lot of money and you claim to be saved, you better check yourself. You better check yourself. Okay? Um, I'm talking about rich. You know, what does the Bible say about money? The love of money is the root of all evil. Okay? Jesus Christ was a homeless Jew. I mean, give me a break. Just more of the same stuff. Um, trying to find something. I'm trying to find something he said the other day that kind of irked me. Uh, one time he said that. Uh, it's funny. He says one saved, always saved is not in the Bible, and then he he quotes First Corinthians chapter six verse nine. But the only sin he lists in that whole verse. Is fornicators will not go to heaven, you know. I thought that I thought that was kind of funny. It's like, what about the rest of the sins, you know? Yeah, this guy is just a wacko. I mean, I don't understand how people can be deceived by this guy. Number one sin that keeps most Christians bound and unable to see clearly is sexual sin. Yeah. Okay. I'm also bound. Yeah. I mean. And what I believe this guy is here, I believe he's a sex pervert. And um, I believe he's devil possessed. Um, he doesn't have a YouTube video or a YouTube channel or anything like that. And um, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. And we'll go to his, uh, his other page, his Eden Decoded page. He's got me blocked from there because uh, I've said some pretty controversial things on there. I've rebuked him pretty hard. For being a false prophet. Um, I mean, just look at this stuff. Is this stuff a Christian should have on their page? Same old stuff. Spirit wife. I mean, yeah. That's that's in the book of Acts somewhere. I just can't remember the verse. Yeah, okay. Um, more stuff. Masturbation. Open spiritual portals. I think I remember reading that in Psalms somewhere. Some people might not read your sarcasm. I know. <laughs> <laughs> He's being sarcastic, by the way. Yeah, I am being sarcastic. If you don't know me by now, if you don't listen to my videos, you know that I'm very sarcastic. And he keeps pushing his stupid book, Save Sexy Singles. Yeah. He's full of lust. Yeah. What does the Bible say about lust? You know. Why would you try to promote your book with a term like that? I know, <laughs> and um, I'm trying to find that post I, I saw the other day, but doesn't look like I'm doing it, but you can see the point. Oh, yeah, like that's very spiritual right there, you know, I mean, I'm sorry for that. You guys, you see what I'm saying? This guy's not a Christian at all. He's a liar. Another false prophet out there making money, making merchandise of people, like I said in my last video. Um, I'm trying to kind of go slow so you guys can see. If you guys want to pause these things and read them, be my guest. But be careful what you put in front of your. Be careful what you put in front of your eyes. The Bible says, "I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not. It shall not cleave to me." I mean, this guy is very wicked. You know, abstain from all appearance of evil. First Thessalonians chapter five verse twenty-two. Satan's a demon, really. Hmm. Chapter and verse? It says Santa. Mm -hmm. Oh, it says Santa? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm dyslexic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I thought it said Satan. For, demons are not in the King James Bible anyway. They're no, they're not. Devils. They're called devils. I thought it, said, thought it said Satan. Well, I guess they are together, you know, Satan, Santa. But. By the way, I was, where I was going with that is Satan's an anointed cherub. He was an anointed cherub. Okay, it's not anymore. 
Um, again, I mean, really, the truth about oral sex, really. I mean, that's that's something you're going to be telling people. I mean, this guy is just wicked. I mean, seriously. I mean, you see the spirit behind this. Vagina worship. Uh, yeah, like that's very spiritual. You know, give me a break. This guy's so this guy's so ridiculous. It's Mac Major runs this page here, but that's pretty much it. I mean, I'm not gonna show you more. You get the picture. This spirit wife again. I mean, just all about sex, 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 masturbation. You know, I mean, it's just masturbation over spirit pores again. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's very spiritual. Vexing. Very vexing, actually. Well, who uh, promotes his books anyway? Hmm? Uh, the Young Turks. Um. I can't remember the Huffington Post. Yeah. The Huffington Compost, I should say. Nothing but a bunch of trash. Okay. The problem is, if you're being endorsed, look at it, look at this right here. If you're being endorsed by uh, like, look at all this right here. I'm just gonna turn this sideways. Well, I don't think it's going to. Independent, the Huffington Post, as featured on the Young Turks. You know, Inquisitor, Independent, Huffington Post. I don't know what the MIC is. Or the Think Tank. So. Friend of the world's enemy of God, by the way. So. That's going to be it. Beware of these false prophets if you're on Facebook. Beware of Mac Major. Beware of this devil right here. Uh, this false prophet Elijah. And beware of that page, Hell is Real. If you're on Facebook, Okay. Beware of Christian Truthers United. They are not of the Lord. All right. They're false. Okay. Anybody that has a hatred toward the Jews, anybody that's just pushing sex like that all the time, they're not saved. And someone that's claiming to be a prophet of God, that's not, especially claiming to be one from the Old Testament, claiming to be Elijah, um, they got, they're, they're seriously devil possessed. Don't fall for this stuff, guys. Um, so that's going to be it. Thank you for watching.